What's up everybody? I'm no Lux Given, and today we are going to be playing some Dominion Online. We are looking at season 46 of the Dominion Online League now and just gonna turn my music down just a little bit. Oh no, oh no. That's the audio kicking in on the stream. Where is the YouTube? Where is the YouTube? Okay, great. Okay, so uh, now we're ready to get started here. Um, I'm kind of thrown off because I started muted again. Uh, so let's see. I'm no Lex Gibbon. Uh, <laughs> we're playing season 46 of the Dominion Online League. And I did pretty well last season, but I think the main thing that I have to work on here is my fundamentals, and that's what we're going to be doing this season. All of my games this season are going to be just using the base set of Dominion cards, uh, and that goes for all of my competitors as well. So we're definitely going to be uh, relearning the basics a little bit, and... Honestly, that makes me a little bit nervous because I normally don't play with base set. So I think a lot of my opponents are going to be more experienced with me with the given cards that we're going to have. Uh, but we're going to have some fun with it too. So I am going to reach out and see if my opponent is good to go here. Let me just, I guess I should try to add them and see if they're online. Um, not sure, oh yeah, yeah, okay, so they're not online just yet, but that's fine, because I wanted to do a little intro here. And I'll get my desktop <clears throat> organized a little bit more. That should be good. pop out the chat, because uh, I don't have the chat on this screen. Let's see if, don't believe anybody's chatting yet. Okay, now I've got the chat out here, and I believe this is the screen or scene that I'm going to use. No, this is completely blank. Um, how about this? It, no, yeah, this is what we've been using. Okay, so this is the one we've been using for Dominion. And I can't, ah, I can't get those black bars away. But you know what? I think that'll be fine. Okay, so that's the one that we're using. Let's switch back to my camera only here. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to make this, this camera thing work. Um... So, uh, yeah, before we get going, I hear Woodrow making some noise, so gonna see if Woodrow wants to hang out and say hi on the stream at all here. And, um, yeah, I can't really, can't really show you any of the stuff that I've been teaching him on the stream. I think that that setup would be a little bit difficult. Hi, Woodrow. I can probably... Let me see one thing real quick. Um, how does this look? Okay, this is fine. You're not you're not really gonna get to see much here though. You're just gonna get to see that I'm wearing uh, gym shorts, maybe. <laughs> Hi, Woodro. Hi, Woody. Do you want to play? You want to do a pup? A pup? No. A pup? Good boy. <laughs> so I make him... Oops, that's not right. I make him stand on a on a little perch if he wants to get picked up. Um, that's why I wasn't just 
reaching in and scooping him out there. He's uh, definitely not used to walking on this shirt as well. It's a, the material isn't isn't super hamster friendly. Great. <laughs> but yes, this is Woodrow. And I know that he's been on stream before. Um, but it's very silly. He wakes up like a different time every day. So right now he's very active during normal hours. He's waking up at like 2 o'clock basically. Um, he's probably up a little bit before that, you know, but, but just that's when he like comes out of his hole. Um, but... Here he is. <laughs> so, yeah, really just, just killing some time until my opponent here is ready. And playing with Woodrow, because he, he kind of just got up today. So, have not really seen him too much. <laughs> he's, oh my gosh, he's very, he's very energetic right now, enough that I probably have to put him back into his cage. Yeah, let me see. Sometimes I just do this, I curl him up, and I put him up against me, and then he's got to find, I'll try not to block it with my thumb, but he's got to find a way out. <laughs> He's a little bit more energetic on this chair as well because then he can try to jump over onto the desk, which I don't really love because there's other messy stuff on the desk. But you know what I probably can do? Yeah, let's do this. Here. can probably show you him grooming because when I drop him over onto that chair he will generally start grooming after a little bit. I'm going to do a digital zoom so I don't have to rejig my camera here. There you go. There's Woodrow grooming. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. So we should be ready to start pretty soon here. Just gonna focus this again. Great. And I will just probably put Woodrow back in a second and then we can get into some Dominion, which is the reason that we are all met. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot of energy because he just woke up. So I'm going to put him back in the cage, let him run on the wheel for a little bit now. <laughs> There you go. Alrighty. He's good to go. And we're good to go. I should maybe grab a water before things get started up here. Just move this out of the way. 
Um, yeah, let me go do that. Or at least I'll put a water bottle in the freezer before my opponent shows up here. Zoom out a tiny little bit there too. All right, I will be right back then. Just gonna grab that water. All righty. So, Dominion Online. Um, we can take a look at the cards here just from the base set on the Dominion website. I'll switch over as soon as these load. These are just loading in here. Um, can I, can I click them to get a bigger view? Yes, I can. They are just loading into the cache, I suppose. Yeah, don't know how to get these black bars off the top. Like, on some programs when you zoom in, like I think on Zoom, all I have to do is scroll up with my mouse wheel and that changes it. But uh, for whatever reason, OBS, like I'd have to manually cut them off and just don't want to mess with that. But here are the base set cards. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 22, 26 cards from the base set here. And each game will have some combination of 10 of these. And that will be the kingdom. And then we can choose to buy any of them and add them into our deck. The purpose of the game is to get victory points, which are also a thing that you can buy. Uh, Gardens is an example of a victory point um, worth one per ten cards you have, rounded down. Most victory points are, um, well, the victory points that are in every game, province, duchy, estate, are a little bit more straightforward than that. Um, but the victory points aren't really the important part of the game. Uh, generally, the important thing in Dominion is recognizing when to start buying victory points and when to just keep buying other things. Uh, so my opponent for this round says that they are ready. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a table here and... We are going to look at the advanced options. So we need to turn off players can see spectator chat for league play. Um, I'm going to turn off this. I'm not sure if we are supposed to use it or not for league play. Um, but when we're only using the band set, uh, the, the band set, the base set, um, there's not really much that you can do with uh, dislike and banned cards. Um, doesn't need to be a rated game. We will show the victory point counter and then the kingdom cards. That's just going to be, that's just going to be, uh, cards from base set here. So I believe the game will just go, I guess, I guess it can be random. I don't think it'll give it to us because we don't have the base set. So I think it's all I think it's all ready to go. So yeah, we are good to go here. And then player order, we're gonna turn it off of random. I'm gonna go, uh, I'll give him first for the first game, and then we're gonna alternate and we're gonna play six games. That part is the same as last season, and we are 
ready to go and ready to see what we can make of this Dominion. Um, we'll go over the, the individual cards, but I probably won't break down the individual cards just at the start here because I will recognize them all. Oh, it did give us um, hovels and, and necropolises and estates. Um, Um, so yeah, it gave us the, um, the, the shelters. We should probably just redo it because there's things that are going to make that matter. Like, like remodel and stuff. I didn't think it would give it to us, but, um, uh, fair enough. Um, I'll just, I'll just resign and... Uh, turn those off. It is it is supposed to be random in league play, so I don't know about like the the specifics of that. Um, so I guess I'll just turn everything off. Um, yeah, and these aren't going to show up because because I don't own them. Um, I don't know if I'm still typing or not. I mean, I know I'm still typing. I don't know if it's still populating a text box. Okay, so now we can actually look at this kingdom and this is a pretty action heavy kingdom. And by that, I mean, we've got festival, we've got village, market doesn't generate actions, but we've got festival and village both of which generate actions for us here. So I think I am feeling pretty good about grabbing a workshop because we are not going to really run out of actions. Workshop can just always grab us a village and I think that that is going to serve us well as the game goes on here. Um, so yeah, each turn you, uh, each turn you grab five cards from the top of your deck. I figured my opponent's gonna go for the Militia here. Militia is pretty strong in these base set games, especially off one of the first turns, because uh, it's like a silver that just messes with your opponent's turn as well. So my opponent goes for the Laboratory right off the rip here, and... Oh, Woodrow just rang his bell. So... I am going to, I'm trying to teach Woodrow right now to use his bell. And if he hits it, if he hits that, I want to reward him by letting him use his ball. So let's let him do that and I will go pick him up after this game is over. But very good boy, Woodrow. Um, yeah, while I'm training him, uh, it's pretty important to make sure that I'm enforcing that behavior that I want to enforce. So with three, I don't know if I want to grab another workshop. I think I'm going to get punished a little bit here for drawing workshop and militia in the same hand. I don't know if I want to start going for the villages already, though, either. I feel like early game... Now, nah, let's grab one more village here, just to throw that into the mix. And my camera is still good. Um, this is actually perfect that... I get militia here because I can't use both of these actions anyways. So what if we discard militia and a copper and then just grab a village and a moat? Because um, that's going to be a really good combination, having these extra actions and then having the um, moat as something to do with these extra actions that will also protect me against militia. 
So I think that that is going to wind up playing out pretty well here. Alrighty, so now we go village into workshop, and I'm probably like... Mm, I guess I grab another militia here, actually, or maybe even a remodel. Yeah, let's grab a remodel because I can buy another village here. So I'm just getting a whole bunch of actions, and the point of this is to just make my deck as good as I can before we start buying victory points. Alrighty, so I got militia, but we are militia-ing back. And we're going to make my opponent discard some cards here. And then with four, we could buy an additional militia. Or we could buy another remodel. I mean, remodel is probably the route that we're going to wind up going at some point in this game. So... I'll grab the remodel now, because then we can start turning the estates into other stuff. It is awkward to draw the cards in this order, but we at least have the moat so that we don't have to discard to the militia. Probably just picking up a village this turn again. Our opponents also definitely got some powerful stuff going on, because laboratory is really powerful. But I'm going to be focusing on festivals and moats as my chief things to buy. Yeah, we drew into the village, so that's awkward, but let's just go ahead and we do want one seller, but I think that we also want uh, additional moats here. And then hands like this are going to be great because we can village and then we can play both of our other things as our opponent just continues to pick up all of these laboratories here. So we can remodel, trash the estate. We could also trash the workshop, but we're definitely going to want to trash the estate and getting a little bit of lag. I think we're just going to want to pick up remodels here, villages whenever we can with workshop. Wow, this is going really slow for some reason. Don't know what that's all about. <clears throat> and then here I've got the option to remodel my militia or I can just Militia and then buy a Festival. So I think that's what I'm going to go for here is Militia, make my opponent discard two cards, which I think this might be my first card, first time playing Militia. My opponent discards a Militia, so that's pretty good for us. And then we'll buy a Festival. So now we'll start having a bunch of extra actions here. If this village can hit our moat, then we can have a really explosive turn this turn. And my opponent just has a bunch of laboratories. They do have a market here, so they've got two buys, but they're not really doing too much with it. They're they're just buying, okay, laboratory and emote, that's a pretty good turn. And laboratory is obviously a really good card here. We did draw the moat, so that is wonderful. Now we're gonna be able to festival into moat. And again, no clue why we're having this lag because Dominion Online rarely lags otherwise, but yeah, now we're looking good here. We didn't actually get that much cash, uh, all things considered. So if we moat, we might hit the village. We might also get some additional cash on top of that. Like if we just got two coppers, that would be good, but we did grab the village, so that's good. We grab another village, and now we have three actions. We could play both of our remodels and the militia. So we probably want to do that, just play everything. Yeah, and that lets us buy a village. So let's remodel the estate into a remodel. Remodel the... Oh, I'm going to have... I'm going to be able to buy so much more than that. Why is that? Why do I already have two gold? Oh, from the festival, right. Okay. Okay. So we're going to trash this and grab another moat. And then we militia them. So this is a pretty productive turn as well because we are continuing to militia my opponent. Um, and then autoplay the treasures. And with two buys, to be honest, I'm just thinking about snagging two villages. They're really good. And if we can corner the market on actions... I think that's going to be better for us than other cards that we could grab. So again, now we can just discard 
some things so that this doesn't matter, but I'm thinking of remodeling the workshop into a festival because we do really like, we do really like workshop, but that, that means we only have one coin and thus nothing to purchase. So I think I'm gonna buy a moat and workshop a village. I think that's the play here with this hand. My opponent grabs another laboratory. So both of us are definitely doing big things here. I am kind of making my own laboratories in a roundabout way with these moats and villages. Uh, my opponent just gets to play all the laboratories. Um, so we'll see which of these works out better. I guess my stuff's a little bit more random, whereas my opponent thing, my opponent's things are a little bit more straightforward here. And they are going to have uh, 12 cash and two buys. So they're gonna grab a province and then they can grab either a militia, remodel workshop, something else on top of that. They're gonna finally grab a village. All right, makes sense. So let's see. Yeah, like I said, our stuff is a lot more random here. We only have one more action. So at this point, I don't know. I can turn the estate into one more remodel. Definitely going to be picking up a village with my copper here. The question is, do I want to remodel a remodel into a gold, which potentially lets me start getting at these provinces? And I think... I think I am going to go ahead and do that here. I think that that is a good play because I can't play both of the remodels. And then I'll just pick up a village. All right, this hand definitely needs a little bit of help. Wow, my opponent is just running through all of their cards every turn here. So this is a little bit scary right now because, yeah, my opponent's going to be hitting these in the opening hand and going to be able to draw their deck basically every time. Uh, I am playing a real person here, Yori. Uh, we are just playing with the base set in this league, but this is this is against a real player and they snag two more laboratories. So yeah, this is definitely getting a little bit scary. I'm gonna lead with village, see if we can hit another village. We do, so that is really good. Uh, that means we are free to moat first, and then we can village and moat. So, like I said, we're doing basically the same thing as my opponent. They are just doing it a little bit more consistently, maybe. Wow. Okay. Yeah, this is good. I'm feeling good right now. And we should be able to maybe remodel our gold, even. I don't know why this is... So slow, though. This is like the slowest that this game has ever been for me, um, which is a little bit annoying for sure. So what am I thinking? I can hit seven, which is really unfortunate, but I can hit seven. So I'll probably just try to grab a gold with militia. And then I can remodel one of my coppers. I'm also thinking about grabbing the last laboratory by remodeling a workshop. Just getting a more expensive deck is going to be good. I don't want to start... I'm just going to buy the gold. Oh, I have two buys as well. Oh, so that's... Maybe seven actually is worthwhile. I can grab, like, Village Remodel. At which point, I would remodel a remodel into a gold. And then just workshop and grab probably another remodel. Oh, I'm not using the workshop, right? Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm remodeling a remodel. Perfect, yeah. Remodel a remodel. And then I'm workshopping a remodel. And then I'm going militia and I'm picking up a remodel and a village. And I don't think this is going to be enough because all my opponent has to do is have the one laboratory in the opening hand. I'm very tempted to just pick up a gold here. 
but I have two golds in the deck that should translate into two provinces. Like this gold, I'm going to try to... Yeah, I did let them get nine laboratories. It's it's, uh, And I'm going to let them get a tenth laboratory here. Um, I'm just hoping that my strategy is a little bit better. Okay, they're not going for the tenth laboratory. I'm just hoping that my own thing that I got going on is also reasonable. Um, but maybe it's not. Maybe this was all bad. Um, <laughs> so what I'm thinking here is I could grab two more remodels this turn. I'm not sure how good that is. I can also grab the last laboratory, though. I don't even know if I really want the last laboratory. I want to be careful how many remodels we leave left here because I don't want the game to end by labs, remodels, and villages being gone. So this is tricky because obviously I can remodel and turn my gold into a province, which was always, always in the cards, always part of the plan. Hmm. His hand really isn't that powerful. My, my gut is to get two more remodels, but that's really scary. My, uh, I, I definitely can't just play the moat here. If I'm going to buy two remodels, I remodel the estate into a remodel and then grab another one. You know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to remodel workshop into... A festival. And then I think I am going to grab one more remodel. I'm considering just getting a militia so that we keep more remodels uh, in play here. But I'm going to go for a remodel. And I'm going to try to get a big turn here where we can remodel multiple golds and things. Uh, so this is looking good. My opponent doesn't have anything this turn. I mean, they're going to be able to buy the last laboratory. Um, no, they are going to go for a festival here. Okay. They're definitely going to go off on like every other turn, but on this turn we were able to survive and we should have a big turn here. So that is good. Um, yeah, we're going to keep playing these moats. All right, so now I got a bunch of remodels. We're going to remodel a gold. Hmm. Yeah, this is seven. It's seven with two buys, but I think now is the time where we have to start grabbing these provinces. Um, and I think I remodel a remodel into a gold and then buy another remodel. So that way I can try to do it again in the future. Yeah, I like this. We're a little bit behind my opponent because we don't have any estates in our deck. Uh, but, and and they also have all of these laboratories that they're going to be able to do some some silly things with, but... I mean, that's all the laboratories. They have they have their entire deck in their hand, but we're not getting moated. I think this is winnable. But they're they're obviously gonna have some pretty some pretty gnarly turns here as well. So 18. So they could possibly buy two provinces and 
some other stuff. Oh, they just buy all the remodels. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, good for them. Um, that was the risk with buying the remodels. They were able to end the game there. And um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so let me edit this table a little bit. All right, so we are going to be on the play for this next game, and I am just going to go get Woodrow and uh, put him back in his cage, and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, uh, so we are ready to go here now. <laughs> it's actually really, really easy to understand, Yuri. Yeah, my opponent definitely had a stronger strategy going on there last game. Hmm. Alright, well with a game like this, I mean, we've got a witch... So I think my play here is just to purchase two silvers uh, because silvers are the best thing with which. Um, oh, I guess chapel's pretty good here too. Didn't see the chapel. Yeah, I think my opponent's got a good idea. Maybe we want one chapel in this, but I don't know. We also want to get the witch as soon as possible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the silvers first, so that way I can buy a witch on turn three, almost guaranteed. <laughs> um, oh, my opponent had a 5-2. Oh, wow. And they didn't go for a witch. That's really interesting. Well, 5-2 on a chapel witch board is certainly quite powerful. Um, and now my opponent is going for the gold. So they got some... They got some powerful things going on. Uh, I'm going to go for a Harbinger here. I think I'll be able to pick up a Chapel at a different point in time and not have to worry about that. Um, my opponent's deck is obviously looking pretty streamlined right now. I think with six, I mean, yeah, I'm tempted to grab a gold here just because of its ability to play it after a Witch, so... We'll, we'll see how that works for us. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just doing things that are way too slow and I'm too used to n playing with uh, like not the base set here. So I guess I'll just put the gold on top and then draw into it with the witch. It is a little bit awkward. I knew it was gonna get us to seven here. Um, but I think seven's just fine because I'll just grab another gold and keep the witches flowing here. Yeah, I do need to make some time to work a chapel into this, don't I? I don't even have any actions. So it's just awkward to draw something after you witch, but I think on five... A festival is good because that's going to make me feel more confident in buying other actions in the future if I can lead with the chapel. But we're going to be able to witch and get a pravi here if that's something that we want. Um, yeah, because we're going to have we're going to have all the cash right here. I'm going to even harbinger and like I don't even know. I just harbinger and I can put. 
I can't put the festival on top just yet, but I already have eight. So at this point, it doesn't really matter what I put on top. I think I just don't top deck, so that way I can redraw into all of this stuff next turn. So let's just play the witch. And I think I do buy a Pravi here. Problem is, like, the game isn't that close to being over. So buying the province is a little bit aggressive. But, I mean, I got, I got nine gold. I'm not going to buy a festival with nine gold, right? If the festival was in there, that would have been great because then I could have done uh, some other stuff. But I'm just going to buy the province. I think that that's good enough. I can buy another province this turn. So, like, yeah, let's... Let's just like take the early lead, I think. And I know that that's going to be a little bit disastrous for us, but as we'll fall off into the late game, but maybe there is, uh, you know, with all of like the curses and stuff going on, that that will be a little bit bad for my opponent, though. My opponent only has, I think they have one curse and one estate at this point. Yeah, they've got one curse, one estate. I'm just gonna buy another province. Let's see. Let's try it out. Uh, this turn, I can probably get... I'll probably just stockpile on the festivals. I think that that is the best one. Oh, no, I'll have two buys. Okay, so I'll buy a village and a chapel here. So now is definitely time for village and chapel time. So that is all good. Let's go ahead and grab our chapel. And I could grab the harbinger, too. I don't think that the harbinger is terrible here. Um... But getting some additional actions in this pile, I think, is going to be good for us. And now we've got the Witch, and we've already got four, so we'll probably be able to buy another Festival or something. And I guess our opponent is now Witching us every turn. So, and they can buy a Province here. Okay, yeah, so this is looking pretty scary. Um, I think that we've, we've maybe messed up. They bought a Province and a Cellar, so they have a lot going on. And we only have five, uh, so we don't nearly have as many things going on here. But mm, we don't really have card draw. So I'm kind of interested in the laboratory. Hmm, do we want a laboratory or a festival here? Because, yeah, we don't really have any card draw in the mix right now. And making our deck a little bit smaller, I think would be good for us. So yeah, that's good. And now we can like laboratory into chapel and trash a bunch of stuff. And I think that that's gonna be good for us. Yeah, our opponent's witching us every turn here because their deck is so small. So that is definitely awkward. Yeah, they're able to draw their whole deck every turn and buy a province every turn. So. I think we've messed up in this one as well. Um, I feel like a lot of the magic of Dominion is definitely awkward once you... Yeah, now I now what do I do? I either trash all this garbage. I mean, that's probably the play. But I'm just going to get more garbage in my deck next turn thanks to my opponent. So do I just want to curse them while the curses are still available? hope to draw into something and make it work later. I think that's what I want to do because my opponent, my opponent otherwise is going to give me all of these curses. So I think I have to fight back by trying to curse them in some mild capacity here. And that's the way to do it. So, uh, but they're also going to be able to buy a province every turn. Mm, yeah, maybe I've just already lost. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, we'll buy another village. Uh, but yeah, things are definitely not looking super good here. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get witch cursed every turn, and yeah, sellers a pretty big game here too. And they're gonna go ahead and buy a province and another seller or a moat. They could buy a moat at this point potentially too. I guess they want to make sure they don't dilute their deck too much and seller allows them to thin through their provinces. Yeah, so Seller's probably the pickup. Um, I'm going to play these five 
and I'm just going to pick up a duchy at this point. I think it's it's probably a little bit of a lost cause, but I mean, I can buy a province this turn. Maybe there's a way to get back into it. It really doesn't look like it now, though. Yeah, my opponent just buying a province every turn. So if I buy the next two provinces, I tie my opponent. And while I think that those odds are pretty low, I think that's what I have to go for here. The only other option would be to buy two gardens and maybe extend the game a little bit. Hmm. Well, what is a garden worth? A garden's only worth two. So this is four points compared to six. If the game goes a little bit longer, though, then these gardens start to be worth three. At which point it's essentially just me buying a province here. Okay. Let's buy two gardens. Oh, wow. And now these are worth three. Okay. That was 30 cards exactly. So right now I have 31 cards in my deck. And, yeah, there's no real way to get back in this game. I definitely can't win, but um, that was interesting, at the very least. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's just grab a... I guess it doesn't really matter. My opponent is probably going to win on their next turn here and buy this last province. Uh, no. No, they are not able to. So they buy a laboratory. Okay, don't count us out yet. Don't count us out yet here. Um, let's play the lab first. Oof, his hand is really not doing too much. Um, but we can buy a gardens for three. And then I'm just going to buy a copper. Now we're just filling my deck with junk, trying to get to the point where these gardens are worth four. Um, the witches aren't going to do too much here either. But the other question is, do I want to chapel and remove this curse? Because this curse could be the difference between like multiple victory points now for me. So What do I have to do? If I buy one more Gardens, that puts me to 24. I have to buy two more Gardens and a Province and hope that my opponent stops buying the Duchies and things. Um, this might be silly, but I'm just going to buy a Copper. I'm, I'm just buying a Copper and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. I, I have to imagine this is going to be a pretty big turn for my opponent. Yeah, Festival into cellar, discarding four cards, back into the laboratory shenanigans. One action left though, and it's a cellar, so they're going to discard three cards this time, and that should let them end the game, yeah. Okay, so we definitely got our butt beat on that one. Um, yeah, okay, so Chapel is really, really powerful. Just make your deck really small first, and then focus on uh, then focus on buying the witch and that stuff. So good for my opponent for uh, understanding that aspect of the game. Certainly much, much better than I. So here we have another Chapel Kingdom. So conventional wisdom tells us that that is what we want to do. Do something like, you know, grab the chapel on this first turn and then grab the militia on the next turn. But that's not what my opponent goes for. My opponent goes for a silver, potentially for like a bandit or something. We are going to have access to money lender on our next turn. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to play and be willing to make some mistakes, but I really like workshop when village is on the table 
and I think that we can potentially make something work with this. So I'm gonna go for that. We also have Artisan as uh, a new card here, so that could potentially get us some some powerful stuff later on. But yeah, Money Lender is a way to thin your deck, so maybe we don't have to focus as much on the Chapel shenanigans. And my opponent's going for a Throne Room right off the bat. That's pretty interesting. Uh, with five, I like Bandit, and Bandit early is pretty good. So I think I will go for Bandit. We're a little bit, a little bit heavy on actions right now. Uh, but my opponent, I don't think that their strategy is really going to pay off super well for them. So I kind of feel okay about what we currently have going on. And I don't think I want another Money Lender. I do think I might grab a Throne Room here because we're gonna start grabbing Villages whenever possible. I do think that you could just be grabbing a village here. That's what my opponent just did. Maybe that's the right call. But my opponent grabbed the village and throne room. Like, they're, they're going for too much late game stuff before they have the early game set up. So maybe I just want to do, just want to grab the village. And uh, that worked out very well for me is now I have a village in this opening hand here. So obviously that was the right call. My opponent grabs a bandit. We're going to village... We are going to workshop and grab another village, and then I'm going to play a bandit. And then I do think I'll grab a chapel here as well to uh, thin through some of this other stuff that we got going on. So now the question is going to be, do I want a second bandit or do I want a market? And I think bandit, especially after your opponent grabs one, a bandit gets even better. So we're going to go all in on this bandit strat. And then I think I might play chapel and just trash everything except for the bandit here. I think that that's good enough. The other play would be just play bandit or just play money lender and like grab the village. Uh, which also isn't horrible, but in picking up the chapel, I knew I wanted to trash my money lender. So I think we take this opportunity. I've got two bandits, so I'm not going to be hurting for cash. And let's just thin down my deck here, and then we'll be able to have some more powerful turns. So my opponent goes for a throne room bandit, which is pretty lucky, to be honest, considering they really don't have anything else worth throne rooming at this part in the game. Uh, but now we have six, and I'm going to want to pick up an Artisan because we can get enough golds from our bandits, and I don't want... Uh, and Artisan can't get bandited itself. So I think this is going to be good. Now we can bandit them, and uh, we just made them discard their bandit, but then we get to play a five, and now I think is where we start working in like the markets or the throne rooms. And I think I like market here. Yeah, plus one action, plus one card, plus one buy, plus one gold. I think that that's going to be useful for us. Uh, looks like we're going to be able to chapel away our hand here while also workshopping and grabbing another village or at this point possibly grabbing a throne room. Um... So I like how this game is going so far. I think that this is, uh, well, now, now we've got a different choice to make. We do get to play two actions. Uh, the, the question is, do we want to chapel away this workshop? And I think the answer to that is going to be yes. So let's chapel, let's trash this stuff, and then let's just play a bandit. And we did make them trash a gold, so that is pretty good. Um, we can now also village artisan and continue to play things. Um, so that becomes pretty interesting here. If our villages hit in action, then we can artisan into a throne room or something like that. Um, 
there might be some other bigger plays that we can make. So, yeah, we found a bandit. Can we find anything else? We found another bandit. Um, <clears throat> so we can, like, artisan, grab a throne room, put the copper on top of our deck, throne room a bandit, then play a bandit, then play a gold, gain a village. That seems pretty good. Let's go ahead and do that. It's the same... We could also just grab a bandit here. But I think the throne room is going to be... I don't know, maybe I should just grab another bandit. Hmm. I think the throne room is going to be more versatile, despite potentially being more constricting at the same time. So let's play throne room, and then let's play another bandit. And now I've got a ton of gold in my deck, and we're just going to buy another village. Uh, this turn, I guess we'll be buying another Artisan. Uh, it's tough to tell because we don't know what we're going to draw off the market. If we can just draw a single Copper, then... Oh, they did make us trash one of our golds off that Throne Room Bandit, their own. Yeah, that's the, that's the tricky part with the Throne Room. Oh, but you know what? We do have seven here. We do have seven. So I think we just grab a Throne Room and a Village, and I think that's fine. Um... Yeah, yeah. We've done a decent job with chapeling and keeping our deck somewhat small, and we'll be able to chapel at least a little bit of junk on this turn here. Um, we'll also have the opportunity to artisan again and do some things with that. And honestly, we don't actually have that much junk. So maybe we just throw a chapel into our next hand and try to do some funkin' and junkin' with that. But if we artisan... I mean, the other play is we artisan, we grab... No, because I want to use this gold to grab a village, I think, here. So I do like markets, and I want to make sure that we're getting some markets because that card is just always good value. Maybe I just grab the market here. Maybe that's the answer. Then I'll have four. I probably still just grab the village, but it puts a market into my deck. Uh, so we'll top deck the gold, play the market, uh, bandit them. We're going to chapel just to trash this single estate. And then I do have two buys. Um, and I could buy a throne room. Now we can start, like, throne rooming markets and things, which is definitely something my opponent is looking to do, too. All right, we'll buy one more throne room because we have four gold. So if you got it, flaunt it. And this hand's looking pretty good. We've got enough to buy a province already. And they were able to trash one of our golds, but I'm hoping that we just have... I mean, we have an additional bandit over them. They are throne rooming their bandit at every possible scenario, but now we get to as well. So hopefully, yeah, we can, we trashed two of their golds. Uh, so that is pretty good. And we actually have seven here. So we aren't able to get a province. So I think I just grab a market. I think now we are in the market to pick up markets because market gets really bonkers if you are able to throne room it. So I think that's what we're going for here. And now we could like artisan for a throne room or something like that. Um, this chapel is definitely not seeming too powerful in the late game. Let's see, does my opponent go throne room plus village? I would be very tempted to throne room plus village on a seven. So they just go for a market as well. Okay, fair enough. Well, that's what I did. That makes me feel better about my choice. Oh, wow. And we have a throne room market already. So let's let's just go for throne room market. Don't think we're getting better than that. Um, and now I already have enough to buy a province. So that's pretty big. But I also have like three buys. So I guess I should be looking for 
opportunities to like I could throne room artisan grab a throne room and a market is that anything If I throne room artisan into throne room bandit, then I'd have to put a gold back on top. And I would, I don't want to put any golds back on top. I, I don't think I'm actually going to buy a province this turn though either. So maybe I do just want to get a market in the mix and that way I have a whole bunch of buys and I can do something like buying all of the markets. I could also just artisan and grab two markets, play both of the markets, and then buy a market and a throne room. Yeah, I think that that's good enough. So let's grab a market, put a gold on top, grab a market, put a gold on top. And now I can market, market. I'm not going to chapel. And now I can... Yeah, so there's like potentially a better buy here, which is just Throne Room Village Village, which makes a little bit better use of all of my purchases. We're not like huge on card draw here is a little bit of the problem, but this seems sweet at the very least. We're, we're running out all of the villages and all of the markets. Um, but now I think we'll start to uh, purchase some provinces and things in here. My opponent's got a really good turn, though. Throne room market, throne room market, and then an additional market. So, yeah, this is, this is going to be close for sure, I think. Uh, both myself and my opponent are definitely doing something here. The markets are gone. The market is closed. And... Uh, they could make a run on some villages this turn. They are going to trash my gold here, but luckily we do have a lot of other gold left over, and all they have is two coppers, so they're just going to go ahead and buy a province, and I think we're okay with that. Now, we're going to have at least nine here. Are we going to have more than nine? No, we're going to have exactly nine. Um, so... What is nine? Nine with two buys. Uh, now that the market is out of here, doesn't seem as fruitful. I think I'm okay with just buying a province. Because I don't want library, right? I think I have no interest in library. Um... I mean, library could be good. What would we buy then? We would buy a library and a throne room. I worry that that makes me a little throne room heavy and it gives my opponent the ability to just buy out the throne rooms and village and end the game. But the thing is, these libraries are good because I have so many villages going into the library. We've got the buys. I do think that we might want to pick up one library because there's no other card draw in this kingdom other than throne room on a village or a market. So let's purchase one library. And I guess let's grab the last village here as well. I'm banking on my deck being slightly stronger than my opponent's deck, but they're able to do some pretty powerful things here too. Um, we already have seven though, and this hand like hasn't even gotten started. So I'm feeling okay. Uh, my opponent with seven, so that is good news for us. That means they're not gonna get too far ahead and I will be able to start buying provinces now. I will... Uh, join my opponent in that game of province purchasing. All right, they're going to go for a throne room, and they can't quite get two throne rooms, but they're going to go for throne room and silver. 
leave themselves the ability to buy out all of the throne rooms and win like that again. Uh, we're going to throne room market, and then another market, and then another market, then a village, and now we play this stuff. So now we have five buys. We can buy two Pravis, and that is looking pretty good. There's no way to end the game here. If we buy all three throne rooms, we will only have five bit of cash left. So let's just buy two Pravis and be good with that. That sounds good to me. That sounds good to me. All right, so I'm feeling good. We're gonna use our villages. We're gonna use two of our villages first before we use our throne room on this next turn. But I think we might have done it. I think we might have found a win in here in all of this mess in game three. So finally kind of finding our footing with the base set after some humbling defeats here from our opponent. Throne Room Bandit or Throne Room? Maybe it's just Throne Room nothing. Maybe he's just showing us that he's got a Throne Room. No, Throne Room Artisan. So this is a this is going to be a really interesting turn. They can... Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's a really crazy way to potentially end the game out of nowhere. They're going to use it to grab Duchies, which is super smart. But you could also potentially use it, like on my turn... I could potentially have a turn where I blow up and throne room an artisan and grab two more throne rooms. So let's see here now. We've got a bunch of actions. Um, I'm tempted by that play that my opponent just made there. I think that that is a, a pretty spicy maneuver. So my question is like, if I'm going to join my opponent on that play, would I rather just, because I'm going to have to top deck two cards, would I rather leave myself like the village to top deck? I think no. I think let's draw one more card deeper because that could get me some really neat things like throne room market here. Um... So now I think I'm going to band it before I reshuffle with Throne Room Market. Yeah, I like that. So let's band it. Then let's Throne Room Market. So here now I could Throne Room Artisan. And then I could Chapel my Copper. And then just purchase an estate. Oh, I won't be able to Chapel my Copper. I'll have to put Chapel and Copper into the next turn. But Throne Room Artisan is quite tempting. The other thing I could do is I could Throne Room Artisan grab... Oh, this is definitely... We're definitely in library territory here, aren't we? So what do I want then? I want... I want a throne room and a library. And then I'll set the chapel aside. All right, so throne room, artisan, grabbing a throne room, putting chapel on top, grabbing a library. I could put the throne room on top and then not have to draw it. But I think I'll just put the top copper on top and then draw it then I'm just going to play library here. There's no sense in throne running library. Uh, so we're skipping chapel. We are keeping village. We are keeping throne room. Okay. I got a little bit dicey, but this is fine. Throne room market. And we draw the rest. And now we've got five buys with 18 cash yet again. And I think that was a pretty productive turn here. Um, so we can buy two throne rooms and then a province. Just double checking. Yep, buy the last two throne rooms and buy an estate on top of that to top it off. And whew, okay, we found a win. We found our first win in season 46. Whew. And all it took was 
a whole bunch of BS. So um, that was pretty good here. Um, oh, I thought I had more turn. Oh, I guess that was my... Right, right, right. I'm on the play in the even number games. Um, that was that was a crazy one. I'm going to go grab a water and I will be right back. Hey, sweetie. Alrighty, so if we can reflect, in that game, I chapeled and my opponent didn't. And that was probably a pretty huge difference because I was able to get things a lot more streamlined. My opponent also went for the throne room way too early. Maybe they were giving us a shot with that game, but... All right. A five off the rip. I think we just have to go for a bandit here with a five off the rip. <clears throat> Let's run it. And uh, we will grab the moat on the on the second turn off that pickup. My opponent also with the five. So what are they going to go for? Okay, we got a bandit and a moat here for both of us. All right. So my opponent and I in very much agreement about what we should be doing this game. Should we be picking up another moat? Um. It's really tough because there's no ways to generate additional actions other than festival on this board. But you know what? I really enjoy festival moat. Um, so we'll see how that works. There's also bureaucrat. So there's just like a lot of ways to uh, gain actions here. Or not gain actions. A lot of attacks on this battlefield. Let's see. Will my opponent go for militia? Will they go for remodel? Poacher, I think, also potentially looks good. Oh, vassal. That's pretty strong. Especially if my opponent's going to go for Vassal. I think Poacher might be good here, mainly because it helps me get to Festival. Like, we're not just going to get lucky with those Festival hands every... Or with those uh, five hands every time. So, I think I am going to grab a Poacher. I do think Remodel could be okay here, too, because of the Bandit. Just giving us ways to remodel Golds into Pravis. Hmm. Maybe we do just want to take advantage of that whenever possible. So that way they don't get trashed. Okay, let's buy a remodel. I'm into it. And we do have a moat. So that is good. I believe we've purchased two moats to our opponent's one moat. And I do think I will join them with a vassal play here. Um, the problem is I don't really see myself playing the vassal. Like, if I have a vassal... And I have a bandit. I'm going to just play the bandit. It's just safer. Now, mm. silver is also better with moat. All right, yeah, let's just buy a silver. I'm fine with that. My opponent going for the remodel now and... I guess I will pick up another moat here. It means that my next hand's going to be good. Yeah. So we actually have a pretty tough decision to make here now. Um, I think I'm going to remodel the moat into a remodel and then buy a festival. Yeah, because I don't want to remodel this gold just yet. So let's remodel this moat into something that we are more happy to have in our deck because we just have so many moats and then let's buy a festival and festival is good with moat but i think this will be 
a little bit more beneficial for us here. My opponent going for a bandit plus remodel turn. Fair enough. I think we're going to remodel estate for sure. And what will we turn it into? Um, probably a remodel. We could go for gardens here. But I think Remodel Bandit is just such a synergy that it's something that we want to keep track of. And I'm going to keep buying the Silvers. My opponent can buy the Vassals. I'm just going to go for the Silvers. And it looks like we've potentially got a Pravi turn here. All we need to do is hit one Copper. Yeah, my opponent had a Vassal. And Vassal is like, you know, it was just a Silver in that scenario. But it could have made their hand potentially more awkward. It wasn't because their hand was just Vassal and four coppers. Uh, but yeah, now my opponent was six, and I think you do want to go for festival on this board. If we can just hit one copper, I will get the province. Oh, we hit a gold. Wow. Um, I am going to grab a province here regardless, though. I think that this could be a faster game than anticipated because of the ability to... Um, trash the golds that Bandit gives and get Pravis. So my opponent just grabbing a moat. We get to Festival into moat, which is certainly slow, but, but doing some work for us here. And then we will Bandit, and then we actually have two buys with seven cash here. So I'm tempted to go Festival moat, despite being told that it was too slow. Yeah. The only other option is like remodel Vassal or remodel Silver, but I don't think that that's as synergistic nor as powerful. So we're going to go for this. And now we have a seven that doesn't... Oh, I'm sorry. This is five again. So we're just going to buy another festival on turn 11. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling okay about this game. My opponent and I taking slightly different approaches. I almost wouldn't mind throwing another bandit into the mix because we have so many remodels. And now that my opponent has purchased a poacher, I'm somewhat tempted to drain a pile. But for right now, I'm going to go for another festival. And then what did we do on this hand? I guess we remodel the estate into another remodel so that we're really kicking on the remodels, and then we just buy another silver. We do get to moat these, so that's good. We have plenty of moats, plenty of moats, and my opponent is buying their first Pravi now. So I think we remodel the estate. I think that's pretty obvious. My opponent remodeled their estate into a gardens, and I don't think... I'm in for that, especially with all of these festivals that I've purchased. I think we're going to have excess actions now, and we can go ahead and potentially even grab a vassal. Obviously, it would be get good to, like, you know, we're vassaling, then just go all in on the vassal strategy, which is why it was good that my opponent already has two vassals. Um... Ah, but we have so much gold in our deck, too. And you can't really vassal into remodel. Like, that's so hard to, to figure out. So let's just grab a silver. Okay, here we either remodel the remodel. I think we just remodel the gold and then buy a moat. I think we're going to enjoy that. Wow, my opponent grabbing a gardens and then a province in the same turn. So they are definitely putting in some work right now. If we can get all, rid of all of these moats, that would be great because that would hurt their poacher. So I definitely wouldn't mind doing that. Um, but, okay, they bought, they bought all of the moats. All right, fair enough. So I am going to just remodel the gold, stay up in the province count here, and then buy an estate. So now we are a duchy or a Gardens up on my opponent. And I really like this hand. We already have enough for a Pravi, and we potentially have enough to do even more. 
my opponent has to discard a moat to their poacher, so we love to see that. Oh my gosh. Woodrow found a way to... Oh, he moved. He moved, so I didn't get to show you. He found a way to stand on top of his ball so that he could look for a way out of the cage. He climbed up on top of the ball, which I keep in the cage, um, so that he has like a little bit more choice over when to use it and stuff, but that is just so silly. All right, so we could make a run on the gardens here. I do not hate that play. Um, We could also just buy Province plus Remodel. Oh, this is a tough turn. This is, this is definitely tough. Thing is, if we just buy a Province here, yeah, I think we should just keep things because we're ahead right now. If we buy a province and then my opponent buys a province and then we buy a province, we win. So I think we want a province. I haven't decided if we want a gardens or a remodel yet though. I think the answer is remodel because this game is just so close to ending. If we are able to get one more province, we put our opponent in a really tough spot. Uh, obviously, this turn, we are not doing that. Uh, we are just going to be remodeling the... Actually, let's just go straight for victory points. Let's remodel the moat into a garden. So that gives us three. And then let's uh, purchase another copper. I don't think we'll get up to four, but gives us gives us the opportunity here. Uh, my opponent and I are probably both going to start to make a run on these gardens now as they're worth three or four victory points. So like, yeah, they're going to buy a gardens. Uh, I'm going to band it and buy a gardens myself just so that we can stay even. And they are going to be buying the last gardens, uh, at which point I guess we will just buy a duchy. Oh, no, they don't have it. They don't have it, actually. Okay, that's great. Um, Woodrow just rang his bell, so I am going to take him out of the cage. Good boy. Good boy. One second, baby. Just started training him with the bell yesterday, so I am just trying to make sure that we stay on top of it there. Um, all right, they just grabbed an estate, so there's only two estates left, right? So I think here what we can do is we can remodel the moat, grab an estate, play a gold, grab an estate, and that's a victory. Nice. Nice, dude. Okay. Two to two. We're back in it. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. Um, so now my opponent is going to be on the play here for our pen ultimate game. And what do we got here? We have another Gardens game. We've got another Chapel game. Hmm. Oh, and my opponent's got the 5-2 on a Witch Chapel board. Well, shoot. Well, shoot. So I definitely have to buy a Chapel here. 
Um, and then I guess I'm buying a silver. But as long as I can aggressively chapel, maybe this won't be that bad for me. Ah, oh, but this hand is absolutely terrible for me. Oh no, I'm drawing all of my estates without my chapel. Oh, that's, that's obviously really frustrating. Let's just keep buying silver. Okay, I will be able to buy a witch, so we're able to get into the witch game here a little bit. And my opponent just buying some silver now as well. Okay, so this was really lucky that I didn't draw like chapel plus four copper here because I'm not sure what I would have been able to do with that. That one game my opponent bought all the libraries or all the laboratories and that was really good for them. Is that a good thing? Buying all the laboratories? The witch is like a laboratory that's just also annoying. So let's at least get in this witch game here. And we'll see what we do with the rest of this later. Uh, but we're going to chapel. We're going to trash everything that isn't the silver. And then this silver, I don't think there's really a sense in buying a second chapel. But I think I'm going to do that. Because I can just chapel the chapel if need be later on, and I'll probably do that. Uh, no, but if I'm going to do that, then it really doesn't make sense, does it? We're honestly about even with my opponent, other than they have got the la they got the first laboratory, and we know that they love laboratories, so we're. We want to get in that lab game as well. I think maybe we skip this one. Okay, and we got a six. A six is good. A six is definitely good, but I think I think we're just going to go for a laboratory. I don't think we're going to go for a gold. I could just grab a gold, though, because gold is good with witch. Maybe that's fine. There's no ways to get extra purchases, though, right? All right, let's just grab a gold for now, because I can witch into the gold, and that might... Oh, wow, they drew the throne room with the laboratory. That is definitely good for them. And then they're able to chapel and trash some estates. Wow. Okay, my opponent has got it going on. We're just going to witch into chapel. No, we witched into two curses. Um, all right. I think we have to buy a village here. We could merchant because we've got a few silvers. Let's... Yeah, I guess we don't really have many in the ways of actions. All right, let's grab a merchant then. Uh, this hand is a seven, so I will probably just chapel, trash my two coppers, they throne room witched me, and I'll buy a laboratory here. We're gonna try to make our deck a little bit small and get into this laboratory game with my opponent. We can buy another laboratory this turn. But we have all of the curses. Wow. This is, yeah, this is really good for my opponent here. They're debating if they want to go for a province. They're going to grab a gold. All right, I'm going to grab another laboratory. These, uh, okay, this is good. This is really good because we can chapel and we can trash a bunch of junk right here. My opponent now going for a province. That is good, but we are going to be out of actions. Might just trash the witch. Uh, let's play this. One, two, three, four. So I could chapel, trash everything, and then just buy a merchant. I think I'm gonna give up on these cur on this on this witch thing, right? 
Yeah, like, which almost just does nothing at this point in the game. Let's try this. Oh, but then I would just be... Oh, I would just be buying a merchant. Or I could undo... I could just do this, and then that would let me buy a throne rune. No, let's do like this. Okay. Try to make our deck a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's why I didn't even bother keeping the witch. We now have all of the curses. Uh, my opponent is in a really good spot here, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to go for a throne room now. Okay. We're going to get to chapel and get rid of a bunch of our curses now. So that is really good. Oh, wow. That is a huge turn. Why is that not working? Okay. Oh. Oh, you can only trash four cards from your hand. Okay, fair enough. Um, we trash four curses. <laughs> that feels good. That feels good for sure. So my opponent's witches are now just drawing cards. They're getting a bunch of gold in their deck. But these merchants, I think, can do some work here too because now we can buy a province. So we're in this game. We are in this one. We'll get to Throne Room Lab this turn. Oof, okay. They're buying provinces out the wazoo as well. But yeah, you got to feel good about that. Uh, we can Merchant first. And then we can Chapel. Trash this. Trash this. And if we hang on to our copper, then we can just buy a laboratory. Or we can trash the copper and buy either a merchant or a silver, which at this point I guess would be a merchant. Okay, let's trash the copper. Get another merchant. Okay, I think that I think that we're making something happen here. My opponent is still buying these provinces though. If I buy the last three provinces, can I win? Yes. No. It's a tie. If I buy the last three provinces right now, it's a tie. Let's go merchant first, then laboratory. All right, let's just buy a province. My opponent's definitely got some powerful hands here too, but I think we will be able to get back into it. Yeah, there we go. They just buy a gold. They're keeping their deck strong, but they are going to start to fall off a little bit. If we can buy the next two provinces, like I said, we win. Let's lead with these merchants. Uh, let's throne room, laboratory. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. Oh. Uh, I needed to keep a copper off the chapel. I did not do that math correctly. All right, so it's trash of this. Right, okay. So now if I can buy the last one... We tie it? Oh, they grabbed it. They grabbed it. Okay. I was like, why, why did the game just end right there? But um, yeah, they just, they drew into their golds. All right. I think that was still a reasonable play there. It's awkward to buy the second to last Pravi, but I think that that was... Uh, the right call in that scenario. Um, that was a pretty quick game. I think we're going to be able to speed through this game as well. So I'll grab Woodrow after this. He's just rolling in and out of the room here. Um, okay, another chapel game, but this is also a century game. And with four, we've got a 4-3 split. 
So what would we want to do with these? To be honest, I don't really even know what the game plan is in a kingdom like this. But Vassal seems pretty strong in this kingdom, I think. So let's go for Vassal. And a win here would allow us to tie it up. So we're still playing for something. We got, we got some skin in the game right now for sure. Um, so my opponent is going for a silver rather than a vassal, but otherwise we are on a pretty similar wavelength. But I'm thinking chapel, we're going to be able to toss so much stuff that hanging on to the, uh, the chapel is going to be pretty good. So now we have kind of a tough decision if we want to go like go for a century or a festival or even a mine right now, though mine wouldn't be good. Um, I think I want to get Sentry as soon as possible. I really like Sentry, and so I just want to pick that up. And uh, yeah, we can we can worry about Chapling in a hand like this that doesn't get us to five. My opponent going for the Festival first, and we're definitely going to Chapel anytime we have the opportunity to get rid of an estate. All right, they're chapeling the whole dang thing. Maybe that's the way to go. Um, yeah, let's let's trash these and then let's vassal. And then we can copper copper into, I think we wanna keep getting more vassals. I think it doesn't make any sense to grab silvers if we are on this vassal strategy. Um, so yeah, now we have like a vassal and a sentry in the deck. I think I think our odds are good enough to vassal. It's two out of three, and then we have three coppers as well. All right, it was just a copper, but that's fine because we can still just play another vassal this turn. Um, and I think we'll find ourselves a scenario where we're just like vassaling through our whole deck. Uh, my opponent now picking up on the vassals as well. So we are going to uh, trash this and then not discard this. Play vassal. Play vassal. Um, all right. And now we can grab another sentry, which I think could be good. We could also throw a festival in the mix which would allow us to use some of these cards that we wind up in our hand at the end. I think Festival's good, because uh, it'll potentially give us a turn where we can buy two Vassals. And I think this is going to be a really strong turn here. Uh, my opponent just grabbing a Gold. I think we're okay with that. We can Festival into Vassal, into Chapel, which, yeah, we're going to play that and just trash all of the coppers that we get and then that one was an estate but now we can buy two vassals all right so we've made a total run on the vassals here and now we should be able to start stacking vassals and things like that uh, so that we can just run through our deck in that way i think this is going to be a strong strategy and i think we've developed it better than our opponent here um, we will let them get a oh yeah yeah, yeah. you got to play you gotta play that cash first too, first, my dude. Um, no problem there. <laughs> they uh, they almost just denied themselves a Pravi. Um, so this hand doesn't have like unlimited potential, but yeah, this is good. So let's go. We're gonna confirm trashing. Which card is first? Oh, I don't get to reorder them. Oh, I see. Mm. Let's... I think I am just going to trash Chapel then now.
make my opponents a little bit confused on what I'm trying to undo. Yeah, because you can't undo um, drawing cards, but we're just going to undo that. We're going to leave the vassal on top. We vassal into vassal, into vassal, into festival. Play two more vassals into vassal, vassal into estate. And now we have 15 with two buys. Um, so that's pretty bang strong. Um, we can buy province plus gold. I think it makes more sense to do pravi plus festival. So yeah, I'm good with Pravi plus Festival. I probably wanted Council Room in here at some point too, but our deck is really, really streamlined at this point. So is our opponent's, but I think ours is just a little bit stronger. They're going to buy another Vassal here. That's going to even us up for sure. Maybe I just wanted to buy another Vassal, but... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I think this is good. Um, if we can hit the century, that would be good for us as well. Uh, so we're not going to trash anything, but we are going to discard this. So now we can vassal, we'll get some more actions, and then we vassal, and we have 15 again. Um, yeah, so that is looking really strong. This time it's 15 with three buys. So... What am I thinking here? Um, I think weaving in a cellar to this would actually be really good. So let's go province. I might want a council room. That's the only thing I'm considering right now. Uh, I'm gonna go festival and cellar. I think this is good. Yeah, now I can hit the cellar in this, uh, which will allow me to discard my estates and draw two cards. Um, so that's looking pretty good. This is going to be a close game, though, because my opponent also has a pretty streamlined deck. At some point, we might buy a bunch of gardens or something like that. My opponent can... And, and there's a lot of luck involved here, too, in terms of what these vassals actually hit. Uh, vassal into vassal into century. Uh, we're going to confirm trashing. We're going to discard this. Vassal into Vassal into Province. Uh, so then we Vassal and we hit a Vassal. And then we've got 14 and two buys. Um, so if we can count our cards here really quick, we've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, yeah, the Gardens are only worth two. They'll probably be worth three before we get out of here. But I think a province duchy turn is going to keep us enough ahead because now if my opponent buys province duchy and we buy province duchy back, then we should be good. Um, they can't really buy province estate here because then all we have to do is buy the province and we win. So this is looking good. This is definitely looking good. Seller's only going to draw us one additional card here, but I think we will see my opponent probably just buy two duchies with this turn. I think that's really the only play that they can make. Yeah, so there is the first duchy. And if I could somehow get to double pravi, then that would win us the game. So let's play these festivals first. Um, then let's play vassal. I just discarded a province, so uh, not a really great turn here. No, it is three buys, but just with six now. Um, so I'm going to go for a gardens, which is only two, and an estate. Uh, so now my gardens are worth three. Um, and now we're in a tricky spot because now my opponent has pulled ahead. Um, with the fact that we have exactly 30 cards, I don't think it's worth it to buy any coppers. We just have to get a little lucky on these vassals, and looks like my opponent is falling off here as well. So let's see, what do we got? I discarded an estate. 
Uh, so this turn is definitely a bummer. Um, I could go for a seller here. Seller's going to get better as this game goes on. I think that's the play. I think that's better than one estate here in the end game. Um, and they're just going to go for a duchy as well. Uh, but we do have a really good turn this turn. We're going to sentry. Uh, we like both of these things. So we're going to just keep this as it is. Oh, and you do get to order. Okay. So we're going to go like that. Uh, so we go vassal into vassal into seller, discarding two, drawing two, then we festival, then we vassal, and oh, I can play another seller here. Well, of course I will, and that draws me a vassal, which gives me 12. So I think I'm pretty free here to Pravi Gardens. That looks good to me, Province Gardens. And now, hmm, yeah, well, now that extra copper starts to look good because I think now I'm at 34 or 35 cards. Uh, but this game's almost over, right? Let's, let's not, let's not. Because if my opponent buys a province, they win. So this game is really close to being over. They're gonna buy a duchy. So if we can get the province here, which we are so close, a copper. Oh, wow, wow, okay. Uh, well, now I am regretting not buying that additional copper, but I'm just gonna go gardens and estate. And yeah, we're really close to our gardens being worth three right now, right? Or we're close to them being worth four. Oh no, we only have 25 cards. Okay, so I guess I messed that up somehow. My opponent is going to tie it. And I know that is a tie because we both had the same amount of turns. GG. So that was really close if I had just purchased one more estate somewhere in there. Um, yeah, those were, those were some close games. And if we take a look here at the kingdom, we both had four provinces. I had some gardens and some estates where my opponent uh, just went the duchy route. And uh, my opponent gets it three and a half games to two and a half games. Uh, so really that was a, a pretty good performance by us, I think. Um, and we didn't get flustered despite losing those first two games. We were then able to win the next two and we lost the next one and then my opponent finished us off with a tie here. But I feel pretty good about that. That after starting losing two, that's that's basically as good as you're gonna get. Um, I mean, I mean, obviously not. You could win the next four. And um, just saying uh, good luck and some pleasantries to my opponent. But um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I think that that helped us learn a little bit too about how to deal with this base set stuff. So I am pretty happy with that. And uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a pretty good experience. I'm gonna see if Woodrow is still up. He should be, he should be. He's just not making any noise right now. Um, we'll see, we'll see what he is up to before we end this video. Oh, right. I put him in the ball. I gotta go get him.
No wonder he was not making too much noise. He wasn't in his cage. But he's doing good. Um, might have some more videos about Woodrow coming soon. Uh, just kind of like a vlog style content about how I have been training him and stuff like that. Some spoilers on the stream today. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, let me swivel back over to here. And that's going to be it. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. And feel free to subscribe if you want to see more about Woodrow or if you want to follow me along for the rest of the season. Kind of as I'm, I won't really say I'm learning Dominion, but I'm definitely learning the tricks to the base set and uh, practicing on a lot of my fundamentals that um, uh, maybe haven't been as big of a focus for me as I just play fun games with random cards with my friends or in the previous seasons. Um, I think we still had some really fun and exciting moments today, despite uh, it really just being with like the base set cards. And uh, I'm definitely curious on any individual thoughts that you guys might have as far as uh, decks that I could have built differently. One thing that would be definitely good for me to hear too is if you can say specific turns and say oh on this turn i would have purchased this instead or i would have i would have done this instead and um i think that that will be a little bit more helpful uh just in terms of like direct feedback obviously once you start to say like oh i would have played the the chapel on that turn or I would have purchased the chapel on that turn, then it affects like every turn after that. Um, so I understand that aspect of it. Um, but yeah, wherever um, anybody has any feedback or if you learned something too, um, maybe that will be cool. But uh, I assume at this point, Dominion is a little bit different from some of the other content that I've created. Um, whereas... With the other content, I think I'm a little bit more of a teacher and Dominion, I'm definitely in the learning phase compared to uh, some of the other really good players that are out there. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you're enjoying Woodrow just running across my arms here. He hates standing still. Um, this is like the only, yeah, um, it's it's impossible to, to get him to, to stop moving. Um, so this is like the only thing that, uh, he does. We play, we play some other games in terms of, uh, you know, him running down my legs or, or things like that. But, uh, he, he's a runner. He's a running boy. Um, so I'm going to put him back so that way I can turn the stream off with both my hands. Actually, let's just have you sit down. You want to sit down on this chair here, Woody? does like the chair like I said he'll he'll groom himself on this chair right over here <laughs> can you even see him oh he's so dark you can barely even see him but he was grooming yeah he's he's zooming and grooming being cute oh that's right I should be using the in-camera zoom And I guess I should also make the camera the full screen. But there he is. There's Woodrow. Um, you know what I guess I could do too? Let's change the... Uh, I don't know. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. Trying to change like the color temperature or something. Nope, that doesn't seem to do anything. Well, there he is, a black hamster on a black chair. Um, oh, I think you can actually see him pretty good now. He's just a little out of focus. Um, but there you go. He's, don't worry, he's 
on my hand right now. So <laughs> he is not running away. Um, but um, but he's done. He's done with that chair. So I am going to be done with the stream here, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Let's see if I can swivel this back around. Zoom out. Zoom out here. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.